Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Ignacio, and this wonderful uh, for hosting this wonderful event of uh, uh, interoperability. <coughs> First of all, um, of course, thank you for the sponsors, City of Zaragoza, Ricardo, top guy here at the uh, at the town hall event. And uh, let me just give you a few words about uh, what is Fnatic. I don't know if you already know. Uh, maybe it's guys from Spain, it's possible to to know what is Fnatic, but but the rest of you, I'll just give you some some clues about it. Fnatic is the, the national competency center for open source. So it's a public company. It it's, uh, really belongs to the Ministry of Industries, very important. So we are close to the industry. We are not close to education. We are not close to open government, something like that. We are close to, to industry. We run at uh, a federal level, but we are based in Extremadura. You know, I don't know if you know what's where Extremadura is. It's very close to Portugal. Um, I will tell you why why it was in Extremadura important in the role of open, open source in uh, in Spain. So we are not in Madrid, we are not in Barcelona, we are not in Seville. We are in the just in the in the east corner of uh, uh, west corner, sorry, close to Portugal. And I, I I will just tell you about the the uh, what I call the uh, Spanish open source wave because it's, it is really a wave that started a long time ago and how this wave has, has bring us all together, Microsoft guys, open source guys together in this, in this kind of, of, of events and, and projects and cooperation. <laughs> so the wave, I don't know if you know that, uh, well, the, the first public movement on open source was uh, um, spotted into the Washington Post. I don't know if you know this article. It's Spain's Linux, it's the Lin Linux Extremadura distribution, so we got the, our own distribution of Debian in this case, was spotted in the Washington Post. Um, this guy over there was the ministry, the regional minister of, the, of education. So uh, this is the, the role of this distribution was in education, really. But he said something quite uh, like a guru, he's not really anymore a guru, but <laughs> he said, uh, Linux guys are the future. If Microsoft doesn't become more open and generous with its code, people will stop using it and it will disappear. So this guy said this sentence 12, 12 years ago. It seems like nuts going nuts. Well, Microsoft open what? It's not possible 12 years ago. So uh, it was uh, our this wave of Spanish uh, in the open source started, I think, in, in Extremadura, and that's why Fnatic is politically tied to Extremadura region. Okay, so. We got the wave started in the 12 years ago. So big up for, for, for Linux. It was really the, the first movement we have. And yes, we have to be proud of this, of this, uh, this kind of, 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 of projects. Yes, it was the, uh, uh, the seagull uh, bird that was the logo and uh, was quite nice. But uh, OK, let's focus on this wave. What was intended for this wave? What was the... the, the the rationale behind this, uh, this wave. Well, it was focused on IT replacement. They didn't think about how to, how to, uh, uh, how to interoperate with Windows. We have, uh, all, we have all these Windows based installed. No, no, we want to IT replacement. This <coughs> is quite huge to achieve. The second, okay, we are in the, uh, Extremadura is it's a quite poor region, so we need to reduce the, re the digital divide and, and maybe with a free software, we can really access and, and get access to all the citizens around the, for the internet and so on. So, digital divide. And of course, we want to be independent from Microsoft. Yes, so uh, what we want to do. We want freedom. And, uh, and we, want to, uh, we love to target the whole society. I don't care about, about SMEs or big companies or, or, or citizens. Of the whole society in Extremadura needs to be targeted with this project. Uh, what's ruled and commanded? Not by technical people, just by politicians. So, in the other, in one hand, it's nice, but on the other hand, uh, uh, technical decisions, uh, well, you know. And in the end, was a kind of Europe against North Americans technology. That's 12 years ago. Okay, that's why this open source wave started. That format, especially point of view, that's the the, the intention behind. And uh, for writing this wave, we got the, the board and the the, the all heavily fueled with a lot of money really coming from the our friends in Brussels because uh, Samadura is the is objective one so it's a poor region where we have a lot of funds for doing things especially IT project so 
we built the Linux that was really in, in, in stick to Sensu was Debian plus Genome, nothing less. It was with special packets for the kids and something like that, but it's Debian plus Genome. Okay. They hire really a lot of people to do that in Extremadura, so really th they get, uh, um, I think, that like around 40 per people working on this distribution uh, internally. So they didn't just contract one, com one company, but really they, they have internal resources working, uh, belong to the, for, the, to, for the regional government. And we have a lot of budget, really, a lot of budget for hiring technical resources, building things, and the promotion. We needed to communicate this stuff around the world, around the world, especially in Latin America. Okay. Well, so all the money was put into this part of the project, really, to build distribution that, and have this distribution really known uh, to be aware of ar around the, the, the world. And of course, we had a nice hallmark for surfing waves. We have, we got on these past times, we got this Palinus. It was a. So it's a, a, a a, a movement from the society to to uh, to uh, really to encourage politicians to the importance the, the importance of using uh, uh, open source in the society. So we got a lot of political engagement. We got the Washington Post that really fuel us uh, uh, encourage us a lot of. We got the society and it's, and very very important. We got uh, uh, in Extremadura a very nice expectate in the IT sector. Say okay, all this movement in the end is going to give me some money or it's just philosophy, is it real or not? And, um, well, so there was a lot of, yeah, uh, a nice hallmark, as I said. But, yes, but, what happens? Well, you're a coder, so it's, it's quite simple. If your complete open source strategy just depends on one distro, and you are run out of money, what happens to your strategy? So it's nuts, false. You really don't have a strategy. That's what, what that's exactly what happened in Samadura. Okay. They were pioneers. So it's nice to be a pioneer. You know that uh, do you know how to identify a pioneer? Pioneers are the guys who have the pins of the Indians sticking their ass. So that's a pioneer really. So they were the first guys running from the Indians. Okay. So yes. So there's a lot of errors around, that, and they were alone, completely alone. There was no IT sector, there was no community around anything, just politicians and a lot of money. So uh, mm, they were not focused in interoperability, just replacement. This is, this today we are seeing, it's not possible. So we live in a very complex world. So it's, it's, you, it's impossible to, to, to have all this stuff away and just use just Linux, that's not possible. So, uh, in the end, we have a low, 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 low sustainability of the project because uh, you need permanent IT internal resources. You don't have, well, you have a very weak community and governance. Uh, it was really driven by political requirements from a lot of, of a lot of guys, of course, <laughs> and technical requirements for really nobody. So that's exactly. And uh, it's very important. There was no connection with the CIO of the of the of the region. Well, in those days, there weren't really just a single CIO. There were around 12 CIOs. So imagine, it's not possible. There was really there's not really a complete strategy around the IT. And yeah, in the end, a very low, 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 low impact in the ICT sector. So really, the ICT sector said, okay, it's it's not for me. So it's not possible to really, in the last mile of the services, to pay services to the society if you really don't have a powerful IT sector. So that's why, from our point of view, this uh, 12 years ago, this strategies was not really, uh, were, were pioneers, but failed some, somehow. Today, today, 2012, uh, 13, 14, 15, the open source project really are, are a vehicle, not anymore an end. 12 years ago, it was an end to have open source. Today, it's just a vehicle. They're not so important. The, imp the importance is to achieve the service of the solution. And they're not only focused on Linux and LibreOffice. We got big data, we got cloud computing, we, are, we got DevOps, we got Internet of Things, and we got open hardware. So it's a complete new world for us. Uh, as I said, they are service focused. So it's focused on education or in government or in end user. 
So it's different business case for different situations, not just one single fits all, as the past. And they are more sustainable because they work inside and cooperate with the communities. Really, it's happening. So sometimes, in the in not really in regional governments, also at the federal level, they work with the communities to achieve the goals. It wasn't possible 12 years ago. Okay? And of course, they really interoperate with different systems. They are nice governed and belongs to corporate to corporate IT strategy. Because yes, today in Spain we have, in every region, also at federal level, we got, a, we got a CIO that really defines the strategy and the open source just fits in their strategy. So it's nice. And uh, we, um, I think also, also it's important, we got the Spanish digital agenda, is where all the funds came, came and, and directed from Europe to the ICT sector. Uh, open source really is a foundation around this digital agenda. Well, you can find mobility, UX, US, uh, smart cities, um, cloud computing, and big data. And all these technologies are mainly based somehow in open source. Some samples. Um, in education, we got very nice projects running in Galicia, it's called Avalar, or Urex in Generalitat Valenciana, where there are, there are Debian, just Debian installations for, for education, education of the child. In government, this is exactly what the point with uh, Fnatic and Microsoft has really uh, met in government. They are now really putting the, the public code as open source. So it's, it's, it's code that's been uh, funded by public money, uh, why don't you put us as, as open source? But not just release on a web page. No, no, no. Just set up a nice community in order really to maintain the software in a, in a community way and really lower down the maintenance cost and really foster the, the innovation. There are people doing that here with, with Fnatic and now Fnatic and Microsoft. We got also some, some Linux distributions uh, um, focuses in the government like Lingovex, Hecos, Azeta Linux here in Zaragoza. So it's just special distributions for the, the civil servants. And well, for if you are really going for the reduced digital divide, you got some special distributions also for, for, for citizenships. But really, in this, the, in the end in this point, you got around 150 distributions. So it's not really the, the business case to do another one for the citizens. The citizen is free to use whatever they want. Okay? Uh, and of course, I'm fin just finishing. Um, the big, big change in this, uh, to, uh, in order to achieve these interoperabilities, I think is that is that a lot of nice companies, p huge companies, belongs and, and supports all these foundations where the open source and free software is being produced, managed, communicated, aggregated, etc. We got Microsoft working with Apache Software Foundation. We got IBM kneeling every foundation we have here. Uh, yes, imagine. So it was not possible 20 years ago. Well, 20 years ago there was really, well, just a small of those of, of those of those of those uh, companies, which means, from my point of view, more interoperability, more support. That in the end is sustainability and confidence. People today is confidence about open source. Some figures around the future of open source survey we have in for Black Duck last uh, two weeks before. 78% of the companies that, that were really uh, ent uh, interviewed by, uh, by Black Duck was 1,300 uh, companies in the US. 78 of companies run on open source software. Less than 3% don't use op open source in any way. And, and, uh, and I asked one of the uh, Gartner analysts, what do you think about that? What? Just 3%? Why? Say, well, they really don't know they are running on open source. It's they, they are doing real, really, but really don't know they're running on open source. Um, um, yeah, let me go exactly. Yes, this is very important. 87% expect their company to increase contributions to open source projects. It's exactly the way that, just an example, Banco Santander is doing. Why I'm using a private cloud computing uh, software? Uh, it's called Open Nebula, because really I can really do some modifications and contribute to the project that everybody will maintain. So it's a big shift in how to adopt open source. Not just adopting, it's also contributing. Okay? And we, we expect it to, 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 to increase in two or three years. And yes, 
imagine all these companies participate 64 percent and over 66 considers considers uh, uh, open source prior into proprietary solutions and in the end just last last slide uh, from these guys the point is that there is no really more proprietary software and free software because it's it's impossible today to, to imagine that a single piece of code is not tied to another open source piece of code so for those guys is the frontier, as Nacho said before, is blurring. Everything is, in the end, software that has to be managed. Okay. Um, connecting to to Thematic and Microsoft, in the end, uh, when I go to the Ministry of Industry, they say, "Please public uh, pu public public your, your software," and and they say exactly that. Sorry, you said my software. Are you talking to me? It's, it's my software. I say, well, exactly, it's not your software. If you take a look inside. And I'll take a look deeper uh, view of your software. You really, you will realize that 77% of your software is reused from open source libraries. So it's not really your, completely your software. And may, may possible all your software today will be GPL because all the compatibility licenses you have inside. So it's not really your software. And that's why why Microsoft and Synology just just uh, uh, meet in the cloud. We meet in the cloud. For, for some guys, the cloud is evil. And if Microsoft is also evil, so it's evil square. OK, evil and evil, but not, not anymore. I think the Azure project is, is nice. And we are using uh, in an open SAS model. So we got the LCGM. It's a, a, a software for running um, electronic administration services for citizens. It's, called, it's, it's an application of the public industry. It's, 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 it's freely available on GitHub. Yes, in GitHub, in the, regional, in the federal government. GitHub, we got GitHub, and, uh, and yes, it's software for electronic public services. We got a new first new community on the GitHub, and it's back with public funding for uh, till two years more. So, it's where uh, th uh, Microsoft put the uh, Azure resources, and the companies are started to sell services around around CGM, um, running on on, on 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 Azure cloud computing. Rafael. I mean, we have the international community right here, um, but uh, Thematic, five, uh, six years ago, something like that, was a different story with Microsoft. I mean, we were uh, on the same table, but not uh, making jokes. We were fighting all the time, <laughs> fighting and really, <laughs> really fighting and tough fighting. So I've been on the stage with, with uh, Thematic, uh, which is, uh, at the end of the day, one of the most, uh, I would say, relevant uh, OSS uh, uh, stakeholders in the country within uh, Microsoft. Um, it's, it's really um, bridging uh, the situation that, that we have. Let me introduce myself. My name is uh, uh, Rafael. I'm, I have just wrote the, the R. I don't know if it's my voice that I'm so strong speaking anyway. Um, my, my name is Rafael. Um, we, uh, we work for uh, my group, um, the, the OSS uh, team. We are the guys inside Microsoft that really care on, on open source or make of making uh, Microsoft embracing open source, uh, bringing uh, communities and developers to our platform, and and yes, selling open source, which uh, <coughs> can can be counterintuitive uh, in a in a in the, the old world that we were discussing before. Um, I'm a father of the three children. I uh, joined Microsoft very recently, one year and a half. Before that, I I worked for a strategy for many years, and and I really think that the moment that Microsoft is really living now, it's what made me uh, you know join the company because the situation. It's uh, it's really it's really amazing. Um, two weeks ago, and for those that will be uh, spending some time uh, in Europe, there's a magnificent um, exhibition in Milano, in Milan, uh, about Leonardo da Vinci. I really encourage you to go if you have the time. But when I was there, I remember of the movie The Third Man. I don't know if you remember this movie, uh, Orson Welles. There's a quote that is amazing. They say, in 30 years with the Borgias. The Borgias the were, by the way, Spanish, from Valencia, <laughs> by the way. Um, they brought many things to, to, to Italy. For example, they, they, I mean, uh, murders, uh, warfare, the mafia was invaded by, by, the, by the Borgias, by the way. Um, but they, they have uh, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and the Renaissance. 30 years. In 500 years, I don't know if uh, there's anyone from Switzerland, um, peace, <laughs> democracy, and the cuckoo clock. 
<laughs> that was the whole thing. And that, that's, that's the comparison that I make to start because I, I think that's where uh, we are at Microsoft. We've been for 10 years now doing many things with open source, many things. Since, since 2005 with the uh, interoperability memo that uh, Bill Gates, after 2001, um, Balmer saying that uh, Linux is a cancer, there was an interoperability uh, memo that were setting the base for, um, uh, yeah, in 2005, setting the base for, for the interoperability of the different world that we were uh, starting to, to live. But many things happened, I mean, since then. We have the PHP uh, with Windows, you have uh, the Microsoft Novel Alliance, uh, Samba Agreement, Hadoop, um, uh, some contributions there uh, to the kernel and the free um, uh, contribution to, uh, to Apache project. Many things happen, uh, um, ASP.NET uh, outsourced and so on. So many, many things happen over the last uh, 10 years. But over the last year, it's been like the Borges. It's been amazing. I mean, the last year was crazy. Uh, since Satya Nadella came in, and you, uh, you, you saw the picture already, I mean, the Microsoft loves Linux. It's not only that uh, there was a, a presentation or a dissertation where Satya has, you know, said, I, we love Linux, we change, and so on and so forth. There are many, many things and many releases coming. I mean, there are many, many, um, like, like releasing our, our core um, code of, of, uh, of um, you know, processing.net is, is being released completely and it's open source right now. So the, the R is, uh, I, I want to stick it again. <laughs> So, so the thing I mean, uh, you have here Gardner, you have here Forrester, you have here all the big guys in the in the analyst industry, uh, media. Microsoft is is really, 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 really in a different in a different mood, and it's not only marketing; it's all about product, and it's all about interoperability. So I think it's uh, it's uh, amazing. What's uh, what's our view uh, at Microsoft right now? I mean, um, basically, and and it's um, it, it's a, it's a good message. I've been reading recently the, this uh, Made to Stick book, which is uh, how to you know, define uh, marketing um, claims for, for your audience. And I think it's very smart that the way that we are thinking now, it's, it's, this is the, the, the objective of the company, for the whole company, this sentence. We will empower every person and every organization on the planet to do more and achieve more. Very, very you know, concise, very specific. It's not... Uh, uh, like uh, one pager or, or, or a book, if you want. And we do it through a platform of uh, cloud and devices. Mobile first, cloud first. This is the, 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 the whole thing, the whole thing that we are already doing. And in this world that we've been discussing uh, this morning, and with this strategy, with this claim, there's no room for non-interoperability. As you can imagine, we need a cloud that really um, support everything. This is all about this. I mean, the, the game that we have to play is this one. We need to have a cloud that support whatever that the customer has. So we need to empower the uh, developers, the IT administrators, the CIOs to use our platform, our cloud for platform with, with whatever they use for. So bring their own IT. And for devices, we are already supporting um, cross-platform strategies. As you know, we've been releasing Office 365 in different in, uh, for iPad, uh, for Android. Now we are being able to translate um, applications for uh, Android to Windows Phone and the other way around, so, or for Android. I mean, it's, it's, it's changing the, the whole thing. This is more or less um, the environments that um, customers already have and, and that uh, Manuel was referring to. I mean, it's a mixed environment with different technologies. And the question is not uh, how, how do they, will they move these technologies to the cloud, but when? So, I mean, we have to make this easy, very easy for them. And this is all, all the objective that we uh, already have. How do we do that? Um, how do we really uh, specifically support the open source for, for our customers? First, with the freedom of choose, I mean, the, the people need to choose the technology that they want to use, so we need to support and we have to make interoperable everything that we have. The freedom to change, and that means that you can go to the cloud and come back. Go to the cloud and come back. This is something that uh, is easy to say, it's not so easy to do with other platforms, and it's something that we already do. With an optimal value, that you pay for what you do and it's very cheap, 
and a vibrant uh, local IT economy because uh, it's something that many people doesn't know, but uh, for every $10 that, uh, that a country, I mean, the, the IT industry in a country is doing, Microsoft does one. One, ten. This is the proportion, it's real. I mean, I'm not cheating. I mean, the company is really investing on the, on the, local, on the local economy. Enabling choice. I've been discussing about the, the cross-platform strategy. I mean, we are putting all the services in every kind of platform. So, for example, last, last week, well, yes, last week, um, it was released the, the, um, the Visual Studio on Linux, <laughs> which is something that, I mean, some years ago, uh, anybody would think about. I mean, it's, it's uh, crazy. Um, open standards. We really work in open standards. We work with uh, more than 400 committees and 150 um, a standardization organization. So this is a lot of work, a lot of Microsoft people. Here you have some Microsoft people that really work in this kind of environments. I mean, we push a lot of, of uh, strong uh, strength in, in, in interoperability and open, and open standards. And very interesting, we are working with the ecosystem because in, in Azure, in our cloud platform, we bring all the open source things and it's uh, through the, the, um, the community. And last but not least, we have the most secure uh, platform there. And it's all about security, privacy, control, and transparency. We comply with the rules. We have the 27,018 uh, um, ISO right now, which is something that anyone has uh, today. Anyone, I mean, in, in terms of big cloud uh, computing. And we really care on the security and the privacy of, of the data, of your data, of the developers or your customers' uh, data. So this is a, a very important uh, topic. So basically what we have is that you can bring, um, this is probably a summary, um, you can bring whatever you want. I mean, you, you, have, you can bring any application that you are using already. You can develop in, in the framework that you are already doing. I mean, Python, PHP, whatever it is. You can bring your, your data, your, data, your database. There are different technologies. There are different databases that you can use and any device or any uh, kind of operating uh, system. But the most important thing is that uh, within these three uh, key elements, which is that is hybrid, as I said, you can go up and go down from the cloud, which is important. You can upload and download. It's enterprise grade, it's for enterprise, and it's hyperscale that you that you uh, have. If you think how many, how, I don't know, do you guess how how many Linux do we have in in Microsoft right now in in Azure in in, in Share? Any any kind of idea? Do you say 10 percent, 5 percent, 50? No, <laughs> unfortunately, no. <laughs> I will be becoming rich if that will happen. We have 22 percent, 22 percent Linux share in in Azure right now. This is the uh, this is the real share that we have. But I can tell you, it's outgrowing Windows. It's doubling Windows in some in many regions, which is amazing. It's doubling. Dublin. <laughs> so li Windows is growing whatever, I cannot tell you, but uh, Linux is <laughs> by two. <laughs> so it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's amazing how, how this is going to happen in, in the following years. We are really, really, really excited. And the, the good thing is that the senior management in, in Microsoft really loves this. When, when uh, Satya says uh, Microsoft loves Linux, he's talking about this. We're super happy. I mean, we, we do not care at all. <laughs> Here you have one of the uh, one of the Spanish customers that is using already this technology. Es una plataforma tecnológica corporativa para la you have it in English down there. Estratégicos de recursos humanos. Es un software empresarial desplegado en el cloud que posee un diseño flexible y modular para la gestión del talento de los trabajadores, de su desarrollo dentro de la empresa y de su rendimiento y productividad. OKN está formada por un universo de suites y herramientas que permiten alinear la estrategia de la empresa con la cultura, los procesos, los resultados y las personas en un único canal. Nuestra implantación internacional en 35 países, con más de 5 millones de usuarios y grandes corporaciones internacionales, es el resultado de la alta orientación al cliente y el constante compromiso por facilitar la mejor experiencia de usuario. Gracias a esta buena experiencia por parte del usuario, hemos crecido mucho en muy poco tiempo, lo que nos ha llevado a desarrollar nuevos y mejores servicios. En este sentido, el hosting tradicional no respondía a nuestras necesidades ni en tiempo ni en forma, por lo que decidimos migrar nuestra plataforma, con una arquitectura 100% open source, a un entorno cloud flexible y potente que nos permitiera seguir creciendo con seguridad y dar así el salto internacional. 
El proyecto requería una solución en la nube. Necesitábamos gran capacidad de carga, altas velocidades de transferencia, redundancia, estabilidad y facilidad de manejo. Necesitábamos conseguir gran velocidad de escritura en los sistemas de ficheros, de forma que sus bases de datos tuviesen un buen soporte para ejecutarse de manera óptima. La gran cantidad de datos que maneja OKN para sus clientes hacía necesario un sistema de base de datos clasterizado con gran capacidad de escalado y respuesta. Para conseguir todo esto, la mejor solución era Microsoft Azure. Partiendo de esa premisa y contando con que toda nuestra plataforma está soportada sobre infraestructuras eh, open source, eh, PHP, Linux, Apache, eh, nos dimos cuenta que Microsoft Azure nos permitía una mayor escalabilidad y una seguridad total. De hecho, comparamos eh, esta infraestructura con otros servicios como los de Amazon y nos dimos cuenta que la apuesta segura era Microsoft Azure. Ahora podemos decir que Azure soporta sin problemas tecnologías open source y que representa una gran oportunidad para nosotros, tanto desde un punto de vista de negocio como técnico. El enfoque de servicio en la nube resultó muy adecuado desde el principio. Azure cumplía con los requisitos necesarios de seguridad y manejo y además se pudieron aprovechar al máximo las capacidades de almacenamiento y cómputo para que el rendimiento del sistema alcanzara su mejor nivel. En un modelo de infraestructura como servicio, como el requerido, se necesita que el sistema de base de datos sea un servicio para la explotación del código, que tenga una gran capacidad de carga y cómputo, con grandes cantidades de datos. Para eso es necesario un sistema de clasterización habitual, multimaster y que permita distribuir la carga entre diferentes máquinas, como el que se ha implementado en OKN. Microsoft Azure permite una total integración con tecnologías open source, lo que representa un importante ahorro para los clientes y una oportunidad de mercado única para open sistemas y para la industria de las tecnologías abiertas. Proyectos como el de OKN demuestran que se puede derribar las barreras entre software libre y privativo. El proyecto ha sido un éxito. Ha habido un gran trabajo de integración por parte de Open Systems, que gracias a su expertise tanto de tecnologías open source como de cloud, está haciendo posible un gran crecimiento y la expansión internacional de OKN. La verdad es que la combinación open source y Microsoft Azure funciona. I just wanted to have this this video just to demonstrate uh, a few things. Not it's not uh, the main claim uh, against AWS is not the main claim. It's not the, the objective. Uh, the, the main objective is to show first um, that uh, Open source uh, on Azure works so far, and it's wor it works so well that the customers are adopting this kind of uh, of, uh, of technologies. But the second point is even more important: is these are two local companies, OKN okay, is an ISV, it's a local ISV, and an Open Systems is a system integrator. Basically, it's an open source system integrator. And and the good thing, under my perspective, is that they are creating value and they, they have a global exposure, um, immediate global exposure with Azure. And this is a big opportunity for, for all of you guys in terms of uh, interoperability, the guys that you, you are already working in this kind of, uh, of technologies to join, uh, to join us, to solve, to bridge this, this kind of uh, um, bringing the two walls together, the, this bridging the gap that we have. And, and uh, I think that the opportunity is, is, really, is really huge. There are many, many other um, customers that you can uh, check in, in our web page, many, many other case studies like, like this one, and I encourage you to, to take a look in. And my last, my, sli my last slide is just to say um, that this is not, uh, this is not the, the end. I mean, this is only probably the, the beginning. And as we started with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Leonardo da Vinci, he said also that the noblest pleasure in life is the joy of understanding. That was one of the of the claims from Leonardo, and I probably will, will end with with this with this claim. I mean, we, we have just started this this um, this uh, trip ten years ago. Last year, let's say this is becoming exponential, is is growing and is in the right direction. But it's only the beginning. We are heavily investing in the next generation architectures, and there are many things coming in terms of uh, container containerization and, and uh, microservicing architectures with, with Docker and many other technologies to have this kind of hybrid cloud approach and containerization of applications, which I think is it's, it's amazing what is going to happen in the next uh, uh, months. Managed services, uh, we are, uh, and this is, and again, on a big opportunity for, for you guys, uh, we are putting in, in managed services many open source services, or many open source technologies as a service in a platform platform as a service, basically. And this is uh, open for you. This is something that you can do today if you want. If you have a service, open source, of course, or none, or an interoperability service within Microsoft Technologies, you can have your virtual machine on Azure, and you can exploit it in a worldwide uh, level. 
We are working also in DevOps, and uh, for example, uh, we will have PowerShell, uh, incorporating PowerShell support, uh, uh, if it's been already done. We have Chef and Puppet Labs. We are working in, in, in cross-platform environments, and we will have many releases in the following uh, months. And last but not least, uh, many things coming in the world of Internet of Things, and, and it's, again, another opportunity. So this is just to say, this is not the end, this is the beginning. And that was all uh, my pitch. I hope uh, that was uh, at least a clarification of where Microsoft is going and where it's heading and was uh, our strategy and that we really welcome you all um, in the new Microsoft. So thank you very much. <laughs>